All right, so the Buckaroos, first game of the season after an off season with a whole bunch of doubt coming from this place and then coming from that place, from the Vegas betting markets to the media people to Bleacher Report saying the Bucks are going to be the seventh seed. Start off the season with a very nice, comfy win over the 76ers on the road. Sure, without, you know, Embiid and without Paul George. But you know what? The Bucks took care of business and really did it in a fashion where they, I liked everything I saw. There was really nothing that concerned me. There were Not everything was perfect at all times, but the things that went wrong are things that are just a given. Like Bobby with four turnovers, you know what? He's going to do a couple boneheaded stuff a game, things a game. He's going to shoot one shot that makes no sense. He's going to try to go coast to coast one time, which he should never do. That's going to happen. But you know what? He made up more than made up for that by having 16 points off, off the bench, 13 points. Really, when it was kind of needed, it was tight in the first quarter, kind of to open up the game. Um, uh, the one thing for him is he needs to shoot more threes. He was one of one from three. Rather than he took like a couple long twos, he made one of them, but... Just shoot more threes. You shoot so well from the three-point line. Turn those long twos into threes. But, like, the bad things of the game. Sure, four turnovers for Bobby. Brooke Lopez ended up three of 11, one of six from three. But even with him, you people were in the chat were saying, you know, Brooke Lopez, what's going on with him? What's going on with him is he was dang near the best player on the floor. He might have been the most valuable Bucks player tonight. I actually would probably make the case that he was. Even though he was 3 of 11, he had the second highest plus minus to Damian Lord with 19, plus 19. He was plus 18, but he had 8 rebounds, 6 assists, 6 blocks. One of them, I, th I thought it should have been 7. The one block that they reversed into back to being a block. I thought that it should have made it 7. But anywho, um, so he gave you elite rim protection again and also just shots that he was altering did a good job getting out and contesting a couple maxi floaters and just altering shots at the rim even if he didn't block the shot and then also just people were have been talking about you know getting the Yan dame and Giannis pick and roll down the brook and pop brook and dame pick and pop duo is something special that needs to be talked about brook was setting some big boy screens for dame that should not be overlooked one of my big worries coming to this season is Brooks pretty old. Could he be washed? Doesn't look at the slightest bit. Game one. Don't want to overreact. Wasn't going to overreact if it was bad, but um, that was good. I don't want to overreact, but everything I saw, you know, it's one game, but it was phenomenal. Giannis, what I love from him was, yeah, 24, five points, 14 rebounds, seven assists. <sighs> Giannis will do that in his sleep. But the great thing was he wasn't stressing. He was kind of doing that in his sleep. Like, he wasn't, it wasn't one of these games where it felt like he had to go balls to the wall and go crazy hard to try and get a win. And that's what was happening last year. Um, right before he got hurt, games like against the Wizards where the Bucks are reeling and struggling and he's going so hard. He's like the only guy bringing it. Well, now, rather than him having to carry scrubs like Jay Crowder around, you know, he's he's got rather than Jay Crowder it's Torian Prince and Beasley you know I I kind of like Beasley he did a great job offensively but Gary Trent Jr. is much better than him to where we actually have some type of defense on the perimeter now Gary Trent Jr. that leads me over to him you know a part of the reason why Giannis didn't have to go so hard because he's not having to cover for everything defensively on the perimeter is because Gary Trent Jr. did an amazing job defensively he only ended up with 11 points which is part of why when the Bucks signed him I was like why is he coming here? Like he's not going to get opportunity to put up big numbers where even like on the nuggets, you probably could put up bigger number, bigger numbers, but his impact. Oh my goodness. Is it felt, even if it's not going to show up statistically um, for his numbers, 10 of 31 for Tyrese Maxey, give some credit to Brooke Lopez um, with his help defense at the rim, but a lot of credit to Gary Trent Jr. Getting matched up with him. And, you know, Malik Beasley wanted to be a defensive stopper last year. He talked about that going into the year, but he just didn't have that in him. He's just not a good defensive player. There's no defensive talent there he's just a shooter where Gary Trent Jr. has some defensive chops to him and he did an amazing job defensively uh honestly I could maybe I mean no Damian Lillard and Giannis were definitely better than him but he was very valuable I'll say that much and then Dorian Prince for the most part it was just the made shots that he was six of seven and four five and three but that's incredible and then outside of that he just kind of 
did okay. He was solid. I wasn't. Gonna, I'm not gonna say he was like locked down like Dame was, but he got a, he got a few rebounds and he was just in the right place. He didn't get in the way. He was fine. He was solid defensively. That's all you need. Shoot the ball well. Be solid. When the Bucks are healthy, he's the seventh guy, and that's great. He's a great seventh man to have, and you can see he's even a solid like fifth starter to have in a starting lineup. Like if he has to start, that's not bad at all for the Bucks, and he did a great job today. Um, and then um, after on the bench, even Pat Connaughton, every guy the the guy almost every Bucks fan other than myself seems to completely hate get him out of town we hate him well as an eighth man not so bad at all he actually played well i mean he didn't shoot the ball well again today which he has been down in terms of his shooting but i mean he got some rebounds he got an offensive rebound he had some nice cuts to the rim four of nine nine points not bad not bad. And he'll go even lower minutes when uh, Chris Milton comes back. and He'll be rather than 21 minutes, 12, 13, 14, maybe 15 minutes. But he's active. He's he's not bad. He doesn't get in the way. Uh, DeLon Wright is really just the definition of doesn't get in the way. But he's fine. He can hold it down for 12 minutes. He can play 13 minutes today. That's fine. And um, I guess the one criticism some Bucks fans might have is, play the young guys. Dr. Rivers, play the young ends. It's just like... Bro, how often do you see championship get teams trying to develop young guys while they're winning, trying to win a championship? I mean, that's the biggest criticism Warriors fans have had over Steve Kerr. Last time when the champ, they won a championship, they had rookie Kaminga and Moses Moody that, for the most part, were kind of riding the pine. And both those guys are way better than any of our young guys. Let's be real here. And so... And that's just what's going to happen with the Warriors. They're, if you're trying to compete, you're probably not also going to be developing young guys. You know, the Miami Big Three heats, were they ever really developing young guys? No. It's very rare where you're going to, and especially when John Horace draft picks never really have worked out under whatever coach, whether Boonholz or, or, or Doc Rivers. There's no reason for Doc to try and play guys that aren't as good, especially when um, the last coach did try to do that and the defense wasn't good, and so he got himself fired. Um, I think he's right to play the veterans. I will say... You know, garbage time, don't want to take too much from it. But Tyler Smith got his first bucket, a nice corner three. And if there's one guy I would be kind of interested in seeing, it would be that 6'10 dude that could shoot a little bit, got a little stroke game going. Um, so, yeah, I think if there's any of the young guys that could be something, I liked that pick when it happened. I did not like the A.J. Johnson pick. And so if there's any of the young guys that I think could be something this year, I'd probably say him. Um, I'm out on Andre Jackson pretty much all the way out on Bo Champ. Um, A.J. Green played four minutes in the first half. He played fine. He had a nice steal off ball. He got cooked by Maxi, but, you know, he showed that he was in the right spot team defense-wise. It was actually kind of a big steal, kind of felt like a little bit of a momentum, momentum swinger. So um, I think that's fine from Doc Rose to throw him out there a few minutes and, you know, see. But you, you, he shouldn't feel any, like, obligation to have to play the young guys. We're trying to win right now. Honestly, if none of these young guys develop, that's fine. If the Bucks win a championship, who the heck cares? So I don't think the young guys are going to be needed to win a championship this year. Um, they probably lower the chances if you're trying to play young guys to win a championship. So um, if somebody overproves it when the chances that they're given, if like every time Tyler Smith gets out there, he dominates, then you're going to have to slowly play him more and more and see what you can get out of him. Same thing with AJ Green, give him a little spurts and maybe at some point start to give Andre Jackson a little spurts. But he shouldn't feel obligated to play these young guys. And so um, everything looked great. Even Doc Rivers, the coaching part of it, uh, I think you know, the off the problem with him is he's not very innovative offensively. The offenses are always pretty stagnant, kind of stars take us home. But when you got Giannis and Dame and not even Chris Milton out there, the stars can't take you home. Where Torian Prince and Gary Trent Jr. are kind of just standing around. But you know what? With the amount of doubles that Giannis and Dame draw and even Bobby draws at sometimes, you're going to get open looks. And that's where you get a four out of five from Torian Prince without having to set him up at all. And a two out of five from three, three out of six game from Gary Trent Jr. Um, his numbers might be down a little bit in points per game this year. He might go from like 15, 16, 17, 18 in the past down to like 12, 13 points a game this year. But if he's efficient and teams see, are going to appreciate that he's playing lockdown defense and the Bucks win a championship... He'll get himself paid. Look what Quintavious Caldwell Pope just got paid. So um, I'm loving this team uh, so far. And it should be a nice 3 0 start if the Bucs take care of business against the Bulls and then the Nets. And then we'll be tested against the Celtics. But great start. Saw everything I wanted to see. Defense was solid for the most part as well. But let me know what y'all thought. Drop a comment, hit that like, and subscribe, please. Yes, sir. <laughs>